the legal system must promote justice on the basis of equal opportunity. This means that all the citizens must get a chance to obtain justice, irrespective of which section of society they are from. This principle tries to minimize the denial of justice that is fueled by discrimination of any kind. Another principle talks about separating the judiciary from the executive in public services of India. This means that the powers given to the people who implement laws are separated from the people who act as the protectors of the law. Let's understand this with an example. Let's say there's a sports tournament in your school. Students from several other schools are also going to take part in this tournament. But it is your school that is conducting the tournament. This means that your school acts as the executive here, the implementers. Let's say there's a football match that's going to be held between your school and another school. So in this football match, the referee is the protector of the rules. Or we can say the referee is the judiciary. Now it would be unfair to have someone from your school as the referee of the match. They might be biased. And even if they aren't, a lot of their decisions will be questioned since they're from your school. Similarly, it was realized that the executive and the judiciary needed to be separate in order to have fair resolutions of conflicts whenever they occur. Another directive principle talks about having a uniform civil code for all the citizens of our country. This means that there is a single law for the entire country applicable to all religious communities in their personal matters, such as marriage, divorce, inheritance, adoption, etc. The intent of this directive was to reduce the number of differences between all the people in our country. Although the intent of it is noble, it may become a problem because it may be under direct conflict with some of the fundamental rights that the citizens of our country have been awarded. The next set of principles we are going to talk about are principles for international peace and security. These principles talk about promoting international peace and security, as well as peacefully coexisting with other countries in the world. India is a vast country and it interacts with many other countries in the world. Switch on the television or open any newspaper. I'm sure you would always find someone on the news discussing all that is happening in different parts of the world. Or some news about the leaders of two countries quarreling. As a country that's connected to all these different countries, it becomes important for India to maintain a peaceful relationship with these countries. To settle international disputes through arbitration, negotiation and dialogue, as well as to honor and respect international laws and treaties. To understand this principle, think about what happens when you and one of your friends quarrel. As both of you are upset, you may say a lot of things that are hurtful and hence make the situation worse. At this time, it is better to have a person who listens to both your problems and tries to settle your differences. But what about countries? How do they settle disputes? There are international organizations that have set up certain rules that are to be followed by countries. These laws help in settling differences between countries such that there is peace and harmony all over the world. 
If you like this video and want to watch many many more amazing videos like these, like and subscribe to our channel now.